Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. Hey everyone, make sure you're safe out there. Don't take any chances with this weather. Um, it's changing hourly. Uh, even our weather has, has changed. It's going to be even colder than what they thought. Um, I have a doctor's appointment Tuesday. I'm, I'm pretty sure my doctor is going to call me tomorrow and say, hey, don't come. Um, but um, yeah, be safe, folks. Don't take any chances. Be safe and and take care of yourselves as best you can. And if you need help, don't be afraid to ask. Ask ask for help from somebody. Um, it's better than the alternative. Okay, um, today or tonight we're reading out of Matthew fourteen thirty. Beginning to sink, he cried, saying, "Lord, save me!" This is the famous walking on water incident in the Bible. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. Let's go down, or up, rather. All right, verse 23 is where we're going to start. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them and walking on the sea. That in and of itself should stand out to everybody. He went to them. The boat was already out there. He went out there walking on top of the ocean. Now, what's interesting to me and what I caught out of this is, is he only did this once. Once that's recorded anyway, but I mean, there's no in, 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 you know implications about it. But what was interesting too to me is that none of the epistles really dig deep into this, if, if they even bother to mention it. I don't think any of them mention it. But yet, this is a very important event happening and being explained in great detail by the writer. Why didn't Jesus do it again? I think this was a, a situation where it was him proving a point. It was him, by his actions, showing them an example. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, Is it a ghost? And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, and he was still struggling with his faith. This I think this may have been the whole point of what of Jesus doing this. Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. Now, what I what's interesting about that is, is like, okay, Lord, if it is you, he, he doubted, if it really is you. Bid me to come out to you. Come, Peter. Without hesitation, Peter got down out of the boat on the water and walked. So that showed he had a really good faith up front. Okay, no doubt. Uh, if you say come, I'm coming. But watch what happens. So he said come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. He had to climb down to the water. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. So when things got rough, he started to have problems. He started to doubt again. He walked from the boat to Jesus, however far that was. That's, that's amazing, and that's a miracle. It just goes to show how much faith he really had. Lord, if you say, I'll do it. But he struggled when things got rough. This is an example to all of us. When things get rough, that's the that, that's an even greater opportunity to be more faithful. Verse 31, and immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? See, Peter doubted. First, he doubted that it was even the Lord. Then, when the Lord said, Come on out, and Peter was like, Good enough for me, took off. Climbed down off the boat and, and started walking. He, you know in his head, he's like, I'm walking on water. That's the Lord. I'm going to him. And then, all of a sudden, he got distracted. We can't get distracted especially with what's going on now. Have you seen the amount of videos being put out? It is, I, I mean, I remember in 2019, there was a lot of videos. 2020, there was a lot of videos, but it slacked off in 2020. This year, already, we're not even all the way through January, and I've seen just the, the level, the amount of videos being put out by people is just at an all-time high, staggering. Um, and unfortunately, the majority of it is lies, false prophecies, and fake hope. Don't get distracted. This is the lesson. Don't get distracted. Jesus said, oh, you little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. 
Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Jesus did this as an example. His life, the way he lived, was an example. His actions were an example to those watching. It was an example to Peter. Peter, why did you doubt? I mean, you said, if it's me, tell me, come, and I'll come out. And I said, come on out. And you got out of the boat without hesitation and walked to me. And then doubted? Little faith. Why did you doubt? Don't doubt. Don't doubt the Lord. Don't doubt the Lord. But notice what else happened. All the people that were watching, they worshipped him saying, truly you are the Son of God. They believed by what they what they saw happen. They believed. Amazing. Amazing. I, I like our Lord's style. Sinking times are praying times with the Lord's servants. Peter neglected prayer at starting upon his venture's journey. But when he began to sink, his danger made him a suppliant, and his cry, though late, was not too late. In our hours of bodily pain and mental anguish, we find ourselves as naturally driven to prayer as the wreck is driven upon the shore by the waves. The fox hies to his hole for protection. The bird flies to the wood for shelter, and even so, the, the tried believer hastens to the mercy seat for safety. Heaven's great harbor of refuge is all prayer. Thousands of weather-beaten vessels have found a haven there. And the moment a storm comes on, it is wise for us to make for it with all sail. Short prayers are long enough. A lot of people are like, I don't know what to say. You don't need to know what to say. Because I can tell you right now, none of us who are Christians know what to say either. The Holy Spirit gives us the words. Short prayers are long enough. A couple of words is all it takes. Just a few words is more than enough to get the point across because your heart and the, and the spirit within you speaks the volumes that need to be spoken for you. There were but three words on the petition which Peter gasped out, but they were sufficient for his purpose. Not length, but strength is desirable. No sense of need is a mighty teacher of brevity. If our prayer had less of the tail feathers of pride and more wing, they would be all the better. Verbiage is to devotion as chaff to wheat. Precious things lie in small compass. And all that is real prayer in many a long address might have been uttered in a petition as short as that of Peter. Our extremities are the Lord's opportunities. Sorry, our extremities are the Lord's opportunities. Immediately, a keen sense of danger forces an anxious cry from us. The ear of Jesus hears, and with him... And with, and with him, ear and heart go together, and the hand does not long linger. Remember what it said in the verse? Instantly, Jesus reached out and grabbed him, didn't let him sink. At the last moment, we appeal to our master, but his swift hand makes up for our delays by instant and effectual action. The little details tell you the, the whole story. Jesus didn't wait. As soon as Peter started to say, Lord, help me, he reached out, met, immediately grabbed him, pulled him up. Keep in mind, he pulled him up so he could walk on water some more. And remember, the two of them walked back to the boat. See, the story doesn't say that, but if Peter walked out to him, the only conclusion we can come to is he walked back with him. People miss that. We, we tend to speed through these things, not stopping to think about the details. If Peter got out of that boat and walked out to the Lord, see, they saw him a ways off. Peter saw him a ways off. Lord, bid me come. Come on, Peter. Peter got out and took off. So he was out there a ways. When the Lord grabbed him and pulled him back up to the surface, they walked on the water back to the boat. I wonder if that ever dawned on Peter. I just walked back on the water back to the boat. Maybe. They walked together back to the boat. See, the Lord doesn't just help you up out of the situation, but he helps you back to safety. That's what we miss from these stories when we don't take the time to read them more closely, to meditate on them, to think about them. Are we nearly engulfed by the boisterous waters of affliction? Let us then lift up our souls unto our Savior, and we may rest assured that he will not suffer us to perish. When we can do nothing, Jesus can do all things. Let us enlist his powerful aid upon our side, and all will be well. I've talked about this multiple times already, just, just this month. 
If, if you're having issues, take them to the Lord. If you're struggling, take them to the Lord. If there's a problem, take it to the Lord. Don't don't sit and wait and hope things are going to you know, fall into place, which most of the time they do. But why not head it off by going straight to the Lord with prayer? Why not take those problems and go right to him and then wait? Take it to him and then wait on his answer. Why not do that? Seems to me it would make more sense. If we spend more time praying, we would spend less time waiting. If we spent more time t going to the mercy seat, we would spend less time wondering if the situation is going to work out for our betterment. See, we know it will because the Lord told us it will. All we have to do is go to him. Lord, we come before you this evening to offer prayers of thanksgiving, prayers of glory, prayers of praise, because you help us in our times of need, even when we don't ask. You help us in so many instances and so many blessings that we don't even know about that you bestow upon us daily, hourly. Today, with the weather the way it is, you gave me the ability to go do things outside that I needed to do. Uh, things that were, I mean, on the outside might not have looked important, but were actually were. Some of us, Lord, are in situations right now because of the weather where we're struggling. Either because power is an issue or um, supplies are an issue. Lord, I pray you pour out your blessings on all the brothers and sisters. I pray you watch over us and keep us all as this weather comes through like it is. Some of us are in some pretty serious snow, pretty serious cold weather. Lord, keep the wood fires burning. Keep the candles lit. Keep the stores full so that the stores in our house full so that we have what we need to, to fuel us and keep us going. Help us just keep an evil, uh, an even head, not evil, even head about these things. To not panic, to not cry out in fear, and to not, not doubt, but instead walk on water. Make us to walk in faith, act in faith, and live in faith. Make us to believe and make us, Lord, without hesitation to come to you with any and every problem we have. We're not bothering you. You said, give me your burden. I can bear it. Why would we hang on to something that we know we can't deal with properly? Instead, we bring it to you and you deal with it perfectly. I love the way that, that the Bible has been, you've been bringing more stuff out, showing us little details that have such big implications in the story, but lessons for us. Lord, may we never fear again. May we never doubt again. But instead, may we stand tall and strong in faith, looking to you for all things and in all things. Where we don't have the words, Lord, I pray you give us the words. Where we don't have the strength or the ability, I pray you give us the strength and the ability. And where there isn't a way, Lord, I pray you make a way. For all of us that are called by your name, for all of those that belong to you, for all your sheep. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for lending us your ear and hearing our prayers. And thank you for making intercession for us constantly. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for speaking on our behalf with words that cannot be uttered because sometimes we just don't have the right words. And I thank you, Lord, that we have this word that tells us these things, that we can go to and look for examples concerning our own issues and go, hmm, I'm going to do what they did. And you, by your living your life, gave us examples to, to, to go by. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your mercy, your grace, your love, your peace, your salvation. Thank you for your blessings. Many, many blessings. We pray you come into your kingdom. You are worthy of all riches, all praise, all honor, and all glory. And it is in your mighty name we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for Evening Devotion. It's amazing. There's so much more in this book we haven't covered. And as long as I keep doing videos, I will never cover all of it. But it's amazing to be able to do this. But the point is made clear. Don't fear and don't doubt. Go to him. And even what you see, it may be something daunting. It may be something hopeless. It may be something you might not be able to see a way out of. What you see, don't let that sway you from your faith. But instead go, Lord, I don't see a clear way through this. I don't see this situation getting better. I don't see how this is going to change. But I'm going to trust you. No matter what I see, I'm going to trust you. And I'm going to look to you and I'm going to wait on you. Because that's what you said to do. So I'm going to walk in faith. 
putting my full faith and trust in you for all things. And watch him work. And you will be shocked. Because all of a sudden, everything will change. All of a sudden, when the time is right, the situation will be will manifest. And everything you need will be taken care of. And you're like, Lord. I, li I literally watched it happen. I watched you do it. Thank you, Lord. And you go into praise and thanksgiving and worship him. He is the Son of God. And he cares for those that are his. Let us show us we care for him and love him by going to him. Just like he, he told us to do. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.